Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to be discussing uh, limit theory in mainstream mathematics and I'm going to be producing a series of videos on this topic because limit theory is something that is very valuable to mainstream mathematics academics. They spend a lot of time on it, they waste a lot of your money uh, over a course which uh, contributes towards your diploma. So uh, let's find out why there is so much wrong with it and why, in fact, limits are not even needed in calculus. So we'll start off with a very simple uh, uh, document with six simple reasons why your mainstream calculus is flawed, and then we'll proceed from there. Let's begin. So now, if we look recently on our Discord channel, we were discussing these things. And if we look at the six simple reasons why the mainstream derivative definition of calculus is flawed, it will become evident uh, why mainstream academics have no clue. So one of, the, one of the things that normally stand out is that they talk about the distance between these two. But these two are not distances, by the way. Uh, this here is not a distance, and this here is not a distance. They're only, they tend to obfuscate things a lot because they start off with, for example, having a curve like that, and then like that, and then, so this is the epsilon here, and this is the delta, okay, and both sides, so this is also epsilon here. And hopefully this is delta as well, but it may not be. It may there may be a different delta. Um, so they start off with a diagram like this, where this here is the supposed f of x, and this here is x. Okay, and here in in fact e is a distance, and so is delta. But that's not the case when you're dealing with derivatives. Okay. That's not the case, because if you look at that definition where they say the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, it applies to this scenario. It doesn't apply to the scenario of a derivative. So for a derivative, you have to change that, because l is no longer a distance, it's a slope. This becomes f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now, don't tell me you already knew about it if you're a mainstream professor, because you'd be dishonest. It's not published like that in any mainstream calculus textbook. You always talk about distances because you're morons and you've never understood calculus, okay? That's the real reason. And you're constantly telling me that I don't understand, which is such a pathetic joke, honestly. Anyway, let's continue. So he asked me a question, In the student asked me a question about limits. And I said, if we write this, this expression here, then this means that not the distance, it's more accurately the slope because we are dealing with slope differences and not function values. Misspelled more there, it needs an E. Okay, uh, so we're dealing with a slope difference between this non-parallel secant line and the tangent line. Okay, it's not a distance. Anyway, so that becomes smaller and smaller, smaller as smaller epsilon are chosen. Okay, or rather, this slope difference can be made smaller than any given epsilon. And how this this is elementary. A two-year-old can tell you this. If this is the non-parallel secant line and this is the tangent line, which it is, then the difference in slopes becomes smaller. And we can make it as small as we like because at that point, it's not defined. Okay? Hang on a second. Let's try that again. Whoop, look. Yeah, you see, you don't have a finite difference there. So this is how broken mainstream calculus is, terribly broken. Now, uh, and then the student asked me, this is what they call the, reg the rigorous definition. And I said, essentially, yes, and it is stated more formally like this. For example, if you look at the debate between that idiot from MIT, uh, Anders Kaysor, you'll see that that is how the definition is stated. Okay, and they're not distances. So if you do a Google search on, uh, let's let's just do that. It might take a little bit longer, but let's do it. Let's say Gabriel, Gabriel, uh, Anders, Org 
debate calculus. Okay, so here it is. That's the first thing that comes up, right? And in this debate, um, I think it's on page 30, is that he starts to talk about these things. Uh, let's see, what is that, 16? Is it on page 20 or? Yeah. So he says that f of x is the number m such that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta grade, greater than zero, such that, a lot of such that's there, for all h not equal to zero, this is true, okay? So, indeed, he thinks of them <clears throat> as distances, but they're not distances, they're actually slopes, okay? And coming back to my document, not to waste time when he's garbage, this is not a well-formed definition. This IDE is not well-formed because you need to know L for its own definition. Okay, it's circular. You don't, and you have no valid systematic way of finding L. Now, one of the things mainstream academics love is to punch holes in functions. And how do they do that? It's very simple. So if you have a function such as f of x, and I'm not using the derivative function right now because then we'd need to use this which is actually not that much different. I'll explain to you now. So if you want to punch a hole at x is equal to k, all you do is you multiply this function by x minus k over x minus k. But let's not get into the fact that moronic mainstream professors don't understand that this here is equal to 1, okay, and that it cannot change f of x. But similarly, you could actually do the same thing down here. You could multiply this by x minus k, over x minus k. So it's not a problem, okay, to undefine. And the reason you need this is that epsilon must be greater than zero, and so must delta be greater than zero. That's what the definition states. See, here, look, it says for all epsilon and delta greater than zero. And there's a reason for that, and the reason for that is this, you see, <laughs> the, the, the slope difference or the slope of the... Uh, Secant line is not defined when you reach the tangent line point. I mean, so you need the non-parallel slope secant line to be defined at the tangent line. It's not, because it's a non-parallel secant line cannot degenerate into a point. That's just impossible, okay? If you do this here, then, then you no longer have a parallel secant line, okay? So in essence, all this bullshit uh, is this complicated bullshit tells you is that you basically needed a, a finite difference or a derivative everywhere. It means you need a tangent everywhere along the smooth curve, except at perhaps the one that you're looking for. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Okay, so it's a weakly stated property, and it's unremarkable and problematic for several reasons. And as I've just explained to you, a two-year-old can tell you that we can make the difference between the tangent line slope and the non-parallel secant line slope as small as you please. You can just show this to your two-year-old and you can ask him, can we make this difference as small as we please? And he'll say, of course. But in reality, you can't make it zero, okay? Because if you try to make it zero, if you try to make the difference zero, which is where it matters, by the way, this is where it matters, you have no finite difference quotient, okay? So mainstream academics are silly morose and stupid creatures, especially math professors and teachers. So it's a juvenile observation. And now the definition is circular because in order to use it, one must know the value of L, okay? Which is, by the way, the derivative. And that's what you're trying to show, okay? You're trying to show that you can find the derivative in a valid systematic way. There is no valid systematic way of finding the derivative in the mainstream. Because the first principles method is this, okay? This is the first principles method is defined like this. This statement here is what the first principles method does. So when you morons who think, oh, wow, wow, this is really cool. When you write something like this, when you write something like this in your bullshit calculus, you write that, okay? When you write that, this here that I've just circled is in fact equivalent to this statement here that I've highlighted. It's equivalent to this. It's circular people. It's as simple as that, okay? 
And so note that the non-parallel secant line slope is not actually equal to the uh, tangent line slope, but is used for finding a slope difference from L or FC, which is the same thing, okay? It's used finding a slope difference from the tangent line slope. That's what it's used. So the formal mainstream mathematics community statement above is given as follows for any f of x. Okay, so it's given like that, but then this f of x changes to a slope, okay? And this here changes to a tangent line slope. So mainstream has no valid systematic way of finding the der derivative. Now, stay tuned because in the next uh, episode, I will talk about Cauchy's or Cauchy's that idiot Frenchman, uh, a non-mathematician, his original def derivative definition was what you see in front of you, and I'll talk about that next time. So if you're not already a subscriber, become one. Follow me on academia.edu. And if you really want to get to know a lot more, you need to become a member. And as you can see, I already have quite a few members, okay? These are members of my channel that they get access to information that you don't. They get access to juicy articles on knowledge that I've never shared with the public. And they have access to a special room here called the members only room. You, you don't get to see that. If you want to see that, you click join on any of my videos. So you go to content, okay? Click join on my video. Let's go there. Uh, let's stop it for a second. Okay, so if you do that, there's a join button here. And the rest is easy. It's five euros a month. It's just the cost of a Starbucks latte or beverage or whatever you maybe drink once a month. You can go without that, especially if you're American and you're trying to cut down on your sugar. <laughs> Never mind. I shouldn't. Uh, I'm also American, so I'm not really disliking Americans. I just dislike stupidity. Now, uh, that's pretty much it. And also, you can become a member of this channel if you join our Discord. And in the beginning, you will only see you'll only see uh, the lobby and questions. You won't see anything else. Okay, so you'll see these two these two channels. You cannot have access to the other channels unless you pass a ten question ten question multiple choice 10 question test and you get 10 out of 10 then which means you need to study some new some new calculus materials in order to get there okay so in the next uh, video i'll talk about cauchy's drivel that you see in front of you and explain to you how you got your bullshit calculus of epsilon and delta and that'll have to wait for another episode. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time. Good